Let's talk about absolute cell references. Each cell within Excel has a unique address with a column first, row next naming convention. So cell A3 refers to this cell. And when one cell makes reference to another cell within an Excel formula, it's really giving Excel directions to the cell that it's talking about. Here's an example. If we create a formula by typing equals A1 plus 5, the result will be 105. What if we copied this formula to the cell below? Would our answer still be 105 or something else? We got a result of 55. When we look at the formula in cell C2, we understand why. Instead of saying A1 plus 5, it now says A2 plus 5. If we think about the formula as giving relative directions, then our first formula was really saying to Excel, add the value in the cell that's two columns away in this same row to the number 5. So copying that formula resulted in a similar action. Excel added the value in the cell that's two columns away in this same row to the number 5. So it added the value in cell A2 to the number 5. This is a useful functionality, as we can see on the sales invoice. To get the expanded amount for each line item before taxes, we'd need to multiply the quantity sold by the unit price, and that's easy enough. So we type equals B12 asterisk C12. We hit enter, and we get our total. Instead of having to retype this for each item on the list, we can just copy the formula, and Excel understands that in each case, it should multiply the value in the cell two columns away by the value in the cell next door. So we hold the fill handle in the lower right corner and drag all the way to the bottom. And Excel calculates the price of each listed item. So it's true to say that cell references within Excel functions are relative by default. But there are many situations that call for an action to be performed using a value in a specific cell, no matter where we copy that formula to. An absolute cell reference ensures that the reference remains constant instead of changing when formulas are copied. So how do we make a cell reference absolute? It's actually quite easy. On our sales invoice, an 8% tax should be added to each item sold. The figure of 8% has already been entered in cell E9. Let's calculate the tax on each item. Equals D12 times our sales tax in cell E9. If we don't make the reference to cell E9 absolute, and then we copy the formula, we'll get some very undesirable results. This is definitely not what we want. We can see by looking at each cell formula that the figures were being multiplied by one row down each time. So let's delete so we can fix that. What we need to do when we first create that formula and before we copy it is to place a dollar sign before the reference to column E and also before the reference to row 9. This tells Excel whether this formula gets copied vertically or horizontally, don't adjust the reference to cell E9. Think of those dollar signs as paying Excel to keep that reference fixed. And here's a time-saving tip. Instead of manually typing in dollar signs each time, right after you type a cell reference or range and with your cursor still flashing within that cell, press F4 on your keyboard and that'll make your cell reference absolute. If you're using a Mac, press Command T instead of F4. So now that we've made the reference to E9 absolute, we can now copy to the cells below. And we notice that each row correctly uses cell E9 to calculate the sales tax for each item. The hardware store also charges 40 euros if a customer requests delivery. Since not all customers require delivery, it's not automatically added to every invoice, but selecting a Y for yes in cell B21 will pull that value from cell D9 and add it to the invoice. We have no intention of copying this formula to anywhere else on this sheet, so there's no need for an absolute reference here. You may notice when you press F4 or Command T that if you continue to press that right after typing in your cell reference or range, the reference will toggle through four options in this order. Absolute, Mixed, 
mixed, and relative. The mixed references allow you to make either the row or the column absolute when copying your formula. This option is used less often, but it's good to know in case you ever need it. Finally, you can also create what's called an expanding reference by making the first cell reference in a range absolute and making the last one relative, or vice versa. This is useful when we want to create a running balance or tally up to the most recent point, like in this cashier's reconciliation sheet. The day starts out with 100 euros in the till. We want a formula that adds this 100 euros in cell B5 to the amount that will be entered in B7 and will continue to add as values are entered in B8, B9, and so on. For this, we type equals sum open parenthesis dollar sign B dollar sign 5 colon to indicate that we're creating a range and we can click on B7. We don't need to worry about the text that's in B6 because text values are automatically ignored in the sum function. We close parenthesis and hit enter. Notice that the reference to cell B7 is relative. That way, when we copy this formula to the subsequent rows, it keeps expanding the range by going one down each time. With each sale, we add the total collected and it gives us a running balance up to the last invoice entered. Let's see if this works. When we enter the amount collected from invoice 562, which was 336.79, we should see a total of 436.79 when we hit enter. And we do. Let's enter the next invoice as 500 euros. We should see 936.79. And we do. Pretty useful, right? So now you know what those dollar signs in Excel formulas mean and why you should be using them. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get more tutorials from GoSkills. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.